What's going on guys? Today is a rainy, kind of depressing day in Illinois and kind of a realization too, being in Hawaii recently, how much I need to be back. The sunshine really, really helps my anxiety and my depression so much and having the ocean available to me. This Illinois existence, really, the only reason I'm here is to care for my mom with dementia, but honestly, I would never have moved back to Illinois ever. And we're what, May 21st or something like that? And it's still rainy, it's still cooler out, it's in the 60s, it's just really crappy horse shit weather, to put it bluntly. So the weather here sucks. I mean, honestly, if you live somewhere else where there's really nice ideal weather, you realize you're completely settling in a place like this, and I am. But again, I'm sacrificing to be here for my mom. There's only so much I can do for my mom, unfortunately, now she's safe, she's in a care home. And I actually have to take care of my physical health and my mental well-being because it's getting jeopardized because of this. And it's been a really long road for me, dealing with my parents, my mom and my dad. My dad passed with dementia. So caregiving is very, very taxing. Nobody knows what's involved with caregiving until you've walked in their shoes. It really is one of those things that's completely brutal. It's very hard for a normal kind of mind to deal with the confusion of a demented mind with dementia or Alzheimer's and just seeing your loved one progress every day is really challenging on your mind and probably more your mind than your body. But I thankfully take care of my body at least as best as I can. I eat very consciously. I'm a vegetarian, I eat fish on occasion. The only point of that is that I'm mindful of what I eat. I eat organic stuff, I don't drink alcohol ever. I avoid drugs. I avoid THC. It doesn't work for me anymore. That's a personal thing. Go figure now that it's legal and you can get killer weed, but it adds to my anxiety. And for me, I just think that much more as I got older, I realized I have that much more on my mind and it just doesn't lend itself well to helping me. It just makes it worse. So I avoid everything. So I'm starting a medication and this is why starting something like a synthetic medication is so challenging for me because I do vegetarian diet vitamins, I drink kombucha, I you know eat very clean and simply and to put something that's kind of crazy pharmaceutical in my body is just very challenging. But I do know I've been struggling really, really horribly with my anxiety, more so than my depression. My anxiety has been pretty off the charts. I mean, almost debilitating. So. When you're kind of scared about what's going on, especially when you go to a doctor and your physical health is all totally, you know, where it needs to be, thankfully. I did go to the ER yesterday for something that I had an issue with. I thought it was a hernia kind of thing, but got to go and talk to a urologist regarding that. But I'm 49 now. I'm going to be 50. I got a colonoscopy scheduled next month. And, you know, I just had a good friend of mine in Hawaii who actually kind of got me into drones, honestly. And he just had a colonoscopy. He's 49 as well. I think, I don't know if he turned 50 yet, but they found stage three colon cancer. So he just had surgery while I was on island working with my anxiety and trying to work through that. He was going through a really intensive gnarly surgery to get his cancer out of his system. They removed his appendix and just all kinds of really intense stuff. And I saw a picture of him while he was in the hospital and you know, he's a Hawaiian warrior. He'll, he'll fight through it, I hope. And it's just one of those things, though. It's a very hard thing to see and to know that, you know, health really is everything. And that's physical health and mental health. And the only reason I'm giving this medication a chance is because right now where I'm at is I feel I have no other option, meaning I don't feel like I can actually get any worse. It's been that bad and that kind of debilitating. And I was taking lorazepam on occasion which it's a benzo, so people who aren't familiar, it's a very addictive, kind of short life kind of thing. So you take it, it works quickly, but it's basically a bandage. And you're just putting a little bandage on your anxiety, and then you start taking a little bit more, and it just kind of gets out of control. I didn't abuse it. Maybe I got really heavy into a bad place. I took two or three milligrams once or twice, but and that's not like me. So I could see the slippery slope with something like those. And when I was in Hawaii, I felt like I was having a really hard time with my anxiety too, which is scary because I'm in Hawaii where I want to be. And it's just an example that no matter where you go, here you are. 
It doesn't matter if you're in Hawaii, Costa Rica, New Zealand. If you're having issues with yourself and your mind and your mental well-being, guess what? It's going to follow you exactly where you're going. So the key is to be happy and be content and to be, you know, where you need to be and then go and travel. I mean, I did feel I got some benefit out of going back to Ireland. I had you know, a really nice time, but at the same time, it was very stressful knowing that I was still dealing with severe anxiety on island in paradise, quote unquote. Again, paradise comes from within. That's the real paradise. So eventually I want to write a book called Paradise Comes From Within. I think I could help a lot of people with maybe my journey in my life. My life has been kind of crazy. I found out I was adopted at 37. I have some kind of deep rooted issues that I think will help other people. But so you know maybe where my anxiety is stemming from. Found out I was adopted at 37. You know, you have this abandonment kind of issue. You feel maybe you are just like severed from a really important connection in your life. So there's that. We had a big financial change with my parents that raised me. They lost all their wealth. We ended up, you know, losing all our homes. I ended up on my front lawn with my furniture one day, getting all my stuff thrown out by basically you know, people like prisoners. So yeah, it was pretty eye-opening. And that's actually what got me into photography. That was a pivoting moment when I ended up on my front lawn. It was essentially like I go and kill myself or I make basically a change in my life for the better. And I kind of had a little rebirth moment where I decided, you know what? I don't have the pressure of worrying about banks or financial trouble and all the cars and money and all that stuff that basically meant nothing was gone. The banks took it and I ended up going back to my parents' house while they still had their home before they lost theirs as well. And I went back to school for photography. I ended up getting tattoos and just kind of touched into my creative side that I always knew I had and I always wanted to explore, but I was never kind of allowed to almost by my parents. My dad was very conservative wanted me to get into his business because it made a lot of money and I was never happy, never really was into it. So that moment was a big moment in my life. Again, we lost a lot of money. <laughs> so we lost four different homes. You know, I lost all my cars, my motorcycles. It was a completely different existence and it's not really that big of a deal, but how drastic it was was really tough because now my mom's dealing with dementia and she has no money other than her social security and I can't give her maybe the care that I wish I could by hiring a nurse and having her in her own home. So it's a lot more stressful because you're limited with your options when you don't have a lot of money and resources. That's the unfortunate side. Money does help and play a part in getting better care, as most of you guys know. So when you don't have money, you really have to work super hard to get that same level and caliber of care. But just so you know, this is venlaxifene aka Effexor, and it's a, what dose? 37.5 milligrams. So this is basically the lowest dose, I believe, for the extended release. And this is day two of taking this. And I tried it once before, but I was still kind of dealing with some stomach issues, and I was taking a little bit more of the lorazepam. I'm pretty much off the lorazepam now. So I figured my stomach seemed fine. I've been eating clean. I lost some weight when I was in Hawaii. I felt like I was ready to basically give this medication another shot and see. I have nothing to lose essentially because my anxiety has been that bad that I figure either I give it three weeks or a month or something, maybe not even, I don't know. Either it works and it does well or I just have a really bad time and I wean myself off and I know that I gave this a little bit of a fair chance and a try. But just so you're aware, I took the first pill yesterday at 8 o'clock a.m. So 37.5 milligrams, one capsule. And that was after eating a bowl of cereal with almond milk at eight o'clock and kind of felt all right. Obviously it takes a little bit to get into your system and this isn't going to be super effective until it builds up in your system, probably at least two to three weeks. But I did feel a little bit tired and I remember feeling that when I took it the first time when I gave it a try. Basically about 11 o'clock I felt like I needed to take a nap. And I've been avoiding caffeine because, of course, caffeine is a stimulant and it's going to not make your anxiety any better. It just kind of keeps your mind going and I'm just laying low from caffeine for the moment. So I just kind of rested and aware that, you know, getting tired and losing energy, what else is there? 
So the whole day felt all right. Nighttime was not as good. So nighttime, I went to sleep. I felt really tired. I woke up, felt like I slept a while. It was only 1230 in the morning. So <laughs> that kind of sucks. Then went and moved to the couch, kind of had another restless sleep, essentially had a crappy sleep and woke up sweating and just felt really kind of not great. So felt almost more anxiety than I have been in a while waking up. And I know it had something to do with just feeling not physically that great with this medication. I could already tell, which is kind of, you know, whatever, but libido goes down. So for whatever that's worth, I know there's a lot of side effects with all this medication, which I don't like, but libido goes down. For some reason, my stomach is kind of upset. So I feel small kind nauseous. I've been trying to make sure I've been drinking enough water and eating clean and not eating anything like pizzas or something too spicy. So I threw away a lot of my hot pepper sauces and stuff just to eliminate my stomach from being upset. So I'm trying to do this with some intention, essentially. I know it's a synthetic medication, and for me, it's really, really a big decision to even take because I feel like I am poisoning myself. I'm that kind of guy who would say avoid medication at all costs, but you know what? I'm at that point where I need to give it a shot and see, maybe it will work. I don't wanna be on medication. It has a bad stigma which is unfortunate because some people really do have an imbalance and really do need this or need something similar to help them out and make them stable. I mean, there's a lot of people with mental illnesses. If you ever try to make an appointment with a therapist or a psychiatrist, you'll realize that because a lot of times they're months out with their appointment times. I mean, I know even when I was in Hawaii talking to some people I met, one guy's brother was having a really bad time with anxiety, took a big mushroom dose, ended up in the hospital getting admitted to a behavioral health center. Another friend of mine's wife's brother ended up just having a psychotic episode, took off all his clothes, threw out all his furniture out of the window, like really pretty heavy stuff. And obviously that's a big you know, thing. I don't feel like I'm at that point or ever will be at that point. If anything, for myself, the only thing I would ever think about is something heavy like taking my own life. So that's a huge thing, but I would never ever do anything damage wise or try to hurt anyone. If anything, I would be concerned about my own well-being and my own self. So again, psychotic episodes for a lot of people are very real. So that's another big reason why you want to stay on top of your mental health just as much as you want to stay on top of your physical health. Because just like my friend who had stage three cancer, a lot of other people who are dealing with ailments, my sister who I don't keep a lot of contact with, I know she's dealing with some kind of autoimmune disease. So while I'm stressing out about maybe a hand tattoo. She's worrying about maybe not being able to physically use her hands anymore. I don't really know much about it, but I think what happens is they start to harden. So just know everything can be worse too. And we gotta be grateful for what we have because if we throw our problems on the table with everyone else's, most likely we'll want ours back. That's kind of something that people say and I believe that it really is true. So, but that's easier said than done because if we have our own journey, you know, I felt horribly when my friend, for example, was telling me about the cancer when I was in Hawaii, but at the same time, my anxiety felt just as intense, just very different. I mean, when you're really feeling like you're not in control of your mind, that's a very scary thing because your mind controls everything, essentially. So your physical health, in my opinion, will follow if your mental health isn't where it needs to be. And dealing with my mom, seeing how bad she can progress, and my dad, for example, with their dementia and that journey, it's pretty scary. I mean, so no matter what you have, the stigma, don't worry about that. Do what you feel is best for you. If you want to give some holistic stuff a try, go for it. I mean, I have. I've tried to take the minimal amount of anything. And yeah, I've tried microdosing psilocybin before. I, you know, I just don't want to toy around. And I know these things at least. I've taken... A medication once when I was younger and it actually did work and kind of acted like a bridge to a really rough time. So for me this is a really rough time dealing with my mom with dementia after a long period not being where I need to be. My home is not in Illinois. It's in Hawaii or somewhere where there's ocean and mountains and nicer weather. I, I do not like this place and even though I'm making the most of it and grateful to be where I'm at and have a home and I have a roof over my head, 
it's still not geographically where I wanna be. I have seasonal depression, that's a very real thing for a lot of people. There's lack of sun, even my mom with her dementia and a lot of the residents where she's at at her facility will basically comment on the weather first thing. My mom today, oh, it's so gloomy out. Like they are completely aware of how shitty this weather is. And guess what? When you have seasonal depression, I'm hyper aware of how crappy it is too. I mean, I can't go and do stuff. It's rainy, it's gray, it's cool out. I'm tired of having the heater on or heat anything. I mean, I'm, it's just, it sucks. And again, it's not like it lasts one or two months. This goes on November, December, January, February, March, April, May. We're in May and we're still in the 40s. So for me, this is a nightmare situation to be in. And when I got off the plane in Hawaii, literally within five seconds, I feel completely in sync, completely at harmony, like ready to go, jump in the ocean, go snorkeling, just get into my groove, which is where my groove is. It's on island and I know that, and I know I need to work back to getting there. This year, I have to make it happen for my physical and my mental well-being, and that's kind of it. I just want to raise awareness that, you know, for this medication thing, there are people like myself who don't really truly believe in it, but at the same time feel like they have no other option other than giving it a chance and seeing maybe it will at least help to get them through a very rough patch, and I'm hoping that's what this will do. I don't plan on staying on it forever, but at the same time, I'm gonna stay open and just see what happens in about a month's time if I can make it. Right now, I still feel kinda, of, you know, not great. So my stomach has been a little bit uneasy all day and I'm a little bit nervous about how I'm gonna to sleep tonight. And feeling like you're sleeping like you're sick and knowing that you have a new medication pumping through your system, changing your chemistry, it's just a weird feeling, but gonna stay positive, gonna stay hopeful and see what happens. If it doesn't work, I stop and I wean myself off and I know that this is not for me and I have to figure something else out. So with that being said, keep me in your thoughts and anyone who has any kind of difficulties with anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, know you're not alone. Know that these kinds of Decisions are not easy for anyone and you're not the only one going through these kinds of tough situations And we're in a really tough period. I mean just being in Illinois in Chicago area I mean people are getting gunned down everywhere. It's super anxiety like driven society now, so my advice would be Don't pay attention to the media turn off your TV unless you're watching something positive and beautiful so get off Facebook get off social media and just do positive stuff. Get out in nature. Nature truly does heal. Tune out and tune into yourself. Meditate at least once a day. Sit with yourself, breathe. And again, just try to detach from some of that noise that is so dramatic. And two books that I've kind of checked out that people have recommended, this book called Don't Panic. This is more about panic attacks, which isn't something that I personally have. I mean, maybe I do on occasion, but this I think is for more extreme panic attacks specific, but it does have a lot of good, helpful information about anxiety and medication and other things. So if you guys are dealing with anxiety, especially anxiety attacks, check out this book. And this book someone gave me, they passed on, it's called The Untethered Soul, and it's a really beautiful book just on everything. I mean, it's just about being conscious and your thoughts and what you're holding on to and just really a good read. I haven't read the whole thing, I'm only a quarter way done, but The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, definitely highly suggest for anyone to read. It can help out really anyone just in life. So highly recommended. Don't Panic is a little bit more specific for anxiety. Again, panic attacks, so if you do have this, good book to check out. A lot of people have said it's life-changing, but this book I believe is as well life-changing and really does help out and a great read. So that's it. Hope that helps and see you guys. Bye.